Hey guys, welcome back. I want to show you this uh, quick Diag on this Ford F250 maybe, F350? F350, it's an 07 with the six liter diesel. Um, went to another shop, they didn't have the tools required to uh, diagnose it. Uh, a lot of shops in our area don't work on diesels. We are one of maybe two independent shops in our area plus the dealership. So I have quite a few tools for these, but the first thing I use is always a scan tool. I plug the scan tool in, I go in, I make a custom data list. So let me show you what I normally look at, and that way it gives me a good indication of where I need to go next. So this is what I selected for a custom data list, and this is just like my first generic look into the system. What I have is RPM, APP signal, um, just in case it's in some weird mode showing 100% throttle. I don't think the diesels do a clear flood, but just in case. Coolant temp, oil temp, um, threw in the oil temp voltage, and the fault. I, sometimes I just kind of click on a bunch of stuff. And then the Ficum power, um, the ML power, and the MM power. Now one of these is going to be your around your battery voltage. One will be anywhere from 45 to 50, um, depending on which Ficum model you have. Typically you want to see around 48, unless you have an upgraded unit or an aftermarket unit. And then we have the engine back pressure and then injection control pressure desired and then actual pressure and the voltage and then the regulator percentage. Um, this almost always starts out at 15%. If the vehicle takes too long to build oil pressure, this will jump up to about 85 or a little higher. So let's, let's jump in here and see what happens when I start cranking it. So right here you can see a rise in my cranking RPM. Um, I could probably zoom in a little bit here. So jumped up, dropped down a little bit. We're cranking at 160 RPM. Um, APP is at zero. Coolant temp is ambient, 87 degrees. Oil temp's 86. Okay, that stuff's all good. Let's go ahead and scroll down here at our Ficum voltages. So Ficum power, we dropped down to about 10 volts while cranking, but we maintained 48 volts on the output side going to the injector. So this Ficum is probably good. We don't have any issues there. Right here we're at desire of zero pressure. Right here we're desiring 1100. So it's, it's really wanting it to crank up the, uh, the oil pressure. Over here the regulator started at 15% jumped up to 85 because it saw that it was struggling to build it. But if we look at this nice curve here, um, this is where our problem's at. This is our injection control pressure. This is actually our high pressure oil system. And these things take anywhere from 450 to 500 typically to start. Um, this side doesn't even begin to build it until the regulator shuts down all the way to 85%. And then it still takes a while, starts to build it, maxes out at 184.1. That is not enough to start the vehicle. So now we know that our Ficum should be supplying enough voltage to fire the injectors. Um, the high pressure oil system is not supplying enough oil. Check the oil level first. Do the simple stuff. Make sure it has oil in it. Check the oil level. Good to go. And the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to get access to the regulator. I'm going to unplug the regulator, remove it install a test fitting into that pump and pressurize the system and check for leaks. Now, many of you guys out there that are DIY or even at the shops will leave the regulator in place, command it to shut with the scan tool and apply air over to the um, sensor. Right over here on the passenger cylinder head, as long as you have a um, later, like a 2004 to 07, uh, six liter. The sensor will be over here. On the early builds, they are actually kind of a pain in the butt to get to, and they're back there. But these new ones, easy to access. A lot of guys will just yank this out, put an air fitting in there, pressurize the system. With the scan tool, command the regulator to shut 100%. The regulator is over here on this side, and it kind of sits down below the turbo. So I have the Ficum removed. It normally sits right there. I take the bracket off. There's also, let me zoom you in a little bit. Ooh, too dark. 
There's also a stud. The very back bolt of the intake manifold has a stud on top of it. Don't be a hero, just take that bolt out. There's no reason slicing your arm up. Um, so I pulled that bolt out. The uh, regulator is now connected down below there. Unplug it, use a special socket to pull it out. And then I install a fitting in there connected to this air hose. And this air hose has a shutoff valve on it. It does not have a gauge on it, but typically when you are hooked up this way, all you have to do is use the scan tool and watch the pressure from this gauge. Uh, that's all you need, so you don't really need a second gauge. Now, why do I use this method rather than just unscrew this, command it with the scan tool? Well, if I have an air leak with this unit um, removed and an air fitting here, the first thing I'm gonna question is the regulator. Um, is it sealing properly? You know, sometimes you can hear it from the oil fill cap or from the crankcase breather right there. But it's just simpler for me to just yank that uh, IPR out, put the test fitting in, pressurize it. I know that there's no other place for the oil to go um, unless there's a leak. In this particular instance, I heard a lot of hissing from the oil cap on this side, so I went ahead and pulled the valve cover. Now let me crack that valve and I'll show you what it sounds like. Let me grab a light that's better suited for, uh, for being able to see down in here. So you can't really uh, identify where it's coming from when it's cranked up that much. So what I'll do is I'll throttle back the air, throttle back the air to a manageable level. So I got the mic flip, flipped around so you won't be able to hear the hissing as much, but let me describe the system to you real quick. Um, this has a, a stand plug right here. It's a four inch plug o-ring on top and bottom. All it does is seal this oil tube off. It's just a, a dummy plug for this end of the, the rail because these rails are used on both sides of the vehicle. In the back, is the standpipe. Let me see if I can get this in here. So, so same location as in the front. It's got an O-ring on top and bottom, but then it also has a hollow tube that goes down into the middle of the engine and it ties into the branch tube that goes to the high pressure oil pump. And that's what supplies all the oil up to the this oil rail and then to the injectors. So it, all the hissing noise is coming from back there um, and then it was really hard to see, but I kind of got the bore scope down in there. I could see a little bit of uh, oil bubbling out of the standpipe. So I got standpipes here. I'm going to take that one out, um, see if I can get a new one in there, and see if this oil leak seals up. But first, you don't want to uh, start taking that apart unless you turn off the air. So let's get that shut off. And you typically don't want to crack this. Um, I can't remember if this one has a check valve. But if you have pressure in there and you crack this wide open, sometimes it'll blow oil out of here. So just use some caution when, uh, when draining the air pressure out of the system. Now this rear uh, standpipe is actually a two piece unit. And it's really difficult to get them out of the uh, passenger side here um, because they're so long they will hit the, heater, or the evaporator box. So sometimes they come out in two pieces and sometimes they try to come out in one piece. This one came out in two pieces and there's a the failure right there. But we still gotta get the other piece out. So in order to try and get that lower section out, I have a long bolt that I'm gonna try and thread into it. Uh, this isn't the bolt I normally use. I normally have one that has a taper on the end of it, but we'll give this one a shot. And then sometimes once you get, start threading it in and, and twisting it, that lower section will twist and then it is easier to remove. Let 
There we go. Okay, so, got it out. This is the stand pipe, the lower section. This is the upper section. Here, right there is our problem, that little flap of O-ring. Um, once I get myself cleaned up, I will uh, I'll take a few pictures of this and put them up on the screen right now. So this is the standpipe um, that goes in the back there. Now this is too long to get installed on the passenger side that we're working on. So you need to separate them. I already lubed this one up so it's easy to install and take apart. Um, I use the transmission assembly lube. Um, just a little bit goes on that O-ring. Everything slides together nice. Put some o motor oil on there or something. Uh, we'll want to lube up these O-rings up here as well. These are going to be the part that seals into the, uh, the oil galley. So lube all this stuff up, take it apart, put this piece in first, and we'll have to drop that into the head, and then we'll drop this piece in, and try to get it all to line up without any of the O-rings tearing, and we'll pressure check it again. Now I'll still have to torque that to spec, but I'm just going to pressure check the system again, make sure that's sealed up. So I don't hear any leakage. I have the valve on 100%. And I hear no leakage from this side of the engine or the other side of the engine. So if I put this back together, the, tr the truck will probably run fine. So that's probably going to be it for now. Um, leaks fixed. I got to wait until the morning when the customer calls me back to find out if he wants us to do the other st stand pipe on the other side and the two stand plugs. Um, I would do them. The, that one was in pretty rough shape. The O-rings are trashed. The other side's probably very similar. It's only a matter of time before it blows out and leaves them walking again. So if you guys have any questions or comments, put those down below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe, click the bell. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.